Since we're all social distancing, let's talk about the ultimate form of being social, but also being distant, social media. Hello starlets, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the best version of yourself and live your dreams. So if you want to be an Everyday Starlet, be sure you hit that subscribe button. Obviously the world is uh, changing and it is in a very scary place right now. And I've been thinking about videos that I can make. Uh, I want to make videos to entertain, but I also want to make videos that I feel like can be helpful to people. And uh, I know that based on my background in the entertainment industry as a stand-up comedian. I know a lot of entertainers, comedians, uh, performers, singers, uh, you know, drag queens, burlesque performers uh, who are not able to go out and perform live because obviously there isn't any live entertainment going on right now. And a lot of them are transitioning to uh, the online space. So since I made the transition from performer to online performer, I guess is the word, um, influencer, content creator, um, Instagram model, I don't know, whatever you want to call me, as long as it's nice, that's fine. I just felt like maybe I could offer some advice and, you know, from someone who has actually been through that transition, uh, so that's why I made this video. So I actually, uh, posted on I think all my social media channels, if there were any specific questions, uh, that anybody had about social media, do you like me to answer? And I didn't get a lot of specific questions, but I got a lot of people that said that they wanted this video. So um, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> where I'm gonna go with this video. So it may get rambly. I apologize now, cause I can talk. Oh, is my light shifting? Okay, the sun. Why won't the sun cooperate? This is lesson one. The sun does not like to cooperate. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna go based on some of the questions that people did ask me. Uh, one of the things that I think was a consistent theme, I had a few, uh, comics who I know who are doing other businesses right now uh, that are separate from comedy and they wanted to know if they should keep their comedy presence and keep their like business presence separate. That I think has to be a completely personal decision. I think when you're when you're starting a business I think you have to ask yourself if you think the business that you're creating makes sense to also be connected to your your comedy life or your performer life, whether you be, uh, you know, comedian, a drag queen, a burlesque performer. If you think that your your business model makes sense to combine the two, uh, then combine the two. If you think it's better for them to be separate and you're more comfortable with them being separate, that's fine too. I think you just need to make that decision for yourself. I have to fix my lighting again. Yeah, I think I think that needs to be a personal decision. Now, for me, when I started uh, my I started my website Everyday Starlet and then I started my YouTube channel pretty quickly after that. And then over time then I ended up on social media and I'm a lot of, um, I'm on Instagram most of the time now and when I originally started Everyday Starlet the website and then the YouTube channel soon after, I I wanted it to be completely separate from comedy. Uh, I just wanted it to be I wanted it to be its own thing and I think honestly the reason why I wanted to do that was because I didn't want the pressure of feeling like I had to be funny. Like, I love it if I make any content on here. If you watch my YouTube videos, if you think that I'm entertaining, if you if you chuckle, if you laugh, whatever, then that's great. But I, I didn't want the pressure of coming on here and talking to the camera and feeling like I have to be like, joke, laugh line, this, that and I just felt like if I promoted myself as like a comedian who was now doing a YouTube channel, I just, I felt, and this might have been my own insecurity, I don't know if anybody really would have done this, but I, in my mind I felt like people were going to be like, well she's not funny. And so to me it took the pressure off. Having my comedy life be separate and having this sort of YouTube blog world, you know, be two separate things, it meant that I could come here and I could just talk to you and I could talk to the camera and I could, um, you know, talk to my audience and I could communicate with you and, and... I could be myself instead of feeling that pressure to have to be funny because there are some things that I talk about on here that I'm like I don't want to always be joking I don't want to always be you know trying to make people laugh I want to be natural and I want to be myself that was completely a creative decision for me um, and it also it took some of the pressure off of me that was my decision not saying that should be your decision but that was just what I decided to do. And then I think as I got more comfortable with my social media presence and as I got more comfortable being here and talking to you, 
I, I felt a little bit more like I could tell you I was a comedian and I could, you know, maybe post a video with a clip of my comedy in it. And I, I just felt more, I think, comfortable in my own skin in general. So I felt like I could talk about those different aspects of my life without worrying about somebody being like, well, she's not funny all the time. Because I actually did like a radio interview many, many, many years ago where, um, I, it was a call-in thing because they were on in a different part of the country. Like it was a call-in thing and I was being interviewed as a, a comedian and after the interview somebody called in like after I was like off the phone and number somebody called in and they were like just trashed me. I mean just completely trashed me that I wasn't funny. They were ready for a comedian and you could tell it was like an old cranky old guy and you know she wasn't funny. I was trying to laugh and but it was just like I was being interviewed like I wasn't there to do a stand-up routine and uh and that really I think that really affected me. This was long before I was blogging or anything but I think I had that in my mind the whole time where like if I go on here people are going to be like well she's not funny like how could she call herself a comedian when it's like I'm not I'm not talking to you as a comedian. A comedian is a part of my job. Um, it's a part of who I am. Uh, you know, it's something that I do, but like, that's not why I'm here talking to you. I'm not here talking to you as a comic to be like, hey, let's be funny. Uh, I'm trying to talk to you as like a person and as like human to human kind of thing. And I'm just telling you that so that, you know, you can decide if that's something you relate to or if it's not. Um, but again, I think it has to be your personal decision and I think it depends on your business and I think it depends on what you wanna, the direction you wanna go with your business. Also wanna make a note, and this is probably not gonna be a popular thing to say, um, cause I've had this discussion with people before and I feel like people are very opinionated about it. If your, if your comedy per se, um, you know, is very uh, controversial, um, which is fine, you know, controversial comedy can be great. Um, but if you feel like your comedy is not going to attract the kind of customers that you want for your business. Uh, you know, especially like maybe if you're a real political comic and you feel like you might scare away people. You know, I mean, I, I get like, I, I get conflicted with, with politics and talking about politics and stuff. I don't really talk about it because I just feel like this isn't the platform for it. Because that's not why people are coming to see me, is not to hear what my political views are. Um, I know a lot of people are like, I should be able to talk about politics and I should be able to talk about this or this controversial issue. Yes, it's your space. You have every right to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. That said, you also have to accept the fact that that may alienate people who may come to you uh, for other reasons. They may like you and they may like what you have to offer in other areas, but because they don't like hearing your political views or your views on this issue or something like that, um, that may scare them off. If you're okay with that, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't care. I don't want people who disagree with my opinions to you know, be my customers. That's fine. 100% fine, your decision. You just have to accept the fact that that might happen and be prepared for that. Okay, so my battery died, I had to put in a new one. Definitely big social media tip, whatever camera you're using to film your videos, which I can actually link the cameras that I use in the description box if you wanna know the types of technology that I use. But yeah, having an extra battery for your camera is a lifesaver, let me tell you. Okay, so uh, another question that I feel like is common that a lot of people ask is like, what social media platform should I focus on? There's two questions you need to ask yourself, uh, you know, to start. And this will honestly give you almost every single answer to any other question that you're gonna have. You need to ask yourself two questions. One, what are my ultimate goals? Like, what is it that I ultimately want out of this and and you should keep it you should keep it pretty specific and I think you should keep it pretty focused like I'll use the example of like if your goal is to one day uh, you know back when when comedy shows start coming back per se or you know or when live shows start coming back if your goal is to be like a live performer and like tour the country or something then that's your goal does that mean that you can't take other opportunities that come along no, of course not. But you want to have that goal in the back of your mind when you post anything. Like, is what I'm posting and where I'm posting it going to get me to that direction? If your goal is to be like on television, that is going to influence how you do things. And that's gonna influence how you choose your content, what content you post. Like, having that in the back of your mind, that's not to say that you can't post something that isn't necessarily 
directly connected to your goal, but having that goal in the back of your mind is going to determine everything. It's going to determine the direction you want to go in. It's going to determine, you know, where you should be spending your time. Like that's the, and, and you know, how you get to that goal is obviously going to shift. and It's going to change, but you want to have that ultimate goal in the back of your mind. The second question you want to ask yourself, which is tied to that question is who is your audience? Who are you posting for? And it's tied to that because obviously like say for example if you want to be like a you know a road performer or something and you want to travel the country on the road you want to build an audience of the type of people who are going to go out to the type of show that you're going to be performing on and you really want to like define who that person is uh, you know if for example your goal is to be on television you obviously want to connect to you know people that would watch television uh, but you also want to get on the radar of you know television executives and you know the people who make those kind of decisions in Hollywood so to speak if you're uh, you know trying to be an influencer and that's your goal uh, you know you want to build your online presence as an influencer, you want to get on the radar of brands, but you also want to get on the radar of people who, uh, you know, relate to your message and people who will be influenced by you, hence the term influencer. It's those two questions that you need to answer and they can answer just about every other question that you have. Obviously, there'll be some technical questions that, you know, are just social media based or whatever um, but as far as like creativity as far as the direction you want to go in your content all that kind of stuff like those two questions can really answer so many things so I mean especially the part about your audience because when people say like what's the best social media to be on what social media should I focus on the answer is where is your audience like you want to be where your audience is and you know if you don't know if you're like completely like I just have no clue uh, you know in that situation it doesn't hurt to look at people who you admire look at people who you relate to look at people who you take inspiration from and figure out you know who their audience is and your audience may not be exactly the same as theirs but it can give you a starting point point. and I don't think it hurts to have a, a presence on every social media I also would recommend that especially when a new social media comes around or especially if you haven't tried to do this on any of the existing social medias is uh, create an account and save your handle uh, either your name or your brand or both you know because those things get snatched up real quick um, so even if you're not gonna be present on there you wanna at least like I hardly ever post on Twitter um, rarely ever but like I have my name and I have my blogs name saved on uh, on Twitter they have an account I kind of set up automatic posting but I don't really spend a lot of time there it's not where I gravitate towards sometimes I actually am like oh I'm gonna try Twitter for a while but I found that my audience in general tends to be more on Instagram uh, so that's where I put more of my focus and more of my time you know I, I like I tried out snapchat when it first came around honestly snapchat didn't really work for me and I didn't really feel like it was attracting my audience I still have it I still have my name saved on there but I don't really focus on it I don't really pay much attention to it I log into it every once in a while to make sure that my account hasn't been hacked but you know I think you don't have to be everywhere you just have to be in the places that your audience is and the people that you want to connect to and the, honestly that might take a little bit of time uh, that might take maybe um, trying out some different social media each social media has its own style its own way of creating content its own way of uh, displaying content its own you know algorithm its own audience you know its own demographic and I don't really see a problem with trying out everything. I would recommend though, because again, there's only so much time in a day, is you know picking one that you think is one that you wanna grow on and, and focusing on that one. I did that with Instagram a few years ago. I was kind of all over the place and I was like, my Instagram was just stuck. It was not going anywhere, it wasn't growing. And I was just like, I'm gonna figure out Instagram if it kills me I'm just you know and I just went in and I started you know studying everything and I started trying things out and I started just you know just going at Instagram 
uh, like gangbusters and I will tell you it didn't happen overnight like you got it it takes time but eventually it started to grow and it really started to pay off and then it just started blowing up so and it, it does take time and in that beginning phase it gets really frustrating it really does I think it helps at least for me it does it to really focus on on the one that you think is going to be the most beneficial for you and then and then like once I started really getting my Instagram in a place that was really good then I kind of went back and started focusing more on creating YouTube content so yeah that would be my advice um, about picking a picking a social media uh, another piece of advice that oh I didn't I'm not I'm not necessarily good at this all the time but it's so important and everybody's always told me it was important I think I just didn't want to believe that it was important, but it really is. And that's consistency. Um, I have to admit on YouTube, I'm not the best at consistency because YouTube is a lot of work. Instagram, uh, I was very inconsistent for a long time and things were just not working. And I actually decided, I want to say it was like two years ago, uh, I was going to post something on my Instagram feed every single day. One post every day. And I have done that every day and it's amazing how and it's most difficult in the beginning when things aren't really happening I think once things start happening it gets you really motivated and you want to keep going but um, it, you know it, it's that consistency and that's where you grow and I'm trying to be more consistent on YouTube but YouTube is a lot more work so I'm not as good about being consistent but uh, yeah consistency and constantly putting out content one thing that has really stopped me in the past was I would put so much pressure on myself um, I think I think it would overthink it I know I overthink things I overthink everything especially like say for example with Instagram I would be like everyone was like oh you have to have like a consistent feed you have to have like this curated feed it all has to be perfect and 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 your photos have to be like you know which photo goes next to this photo is so important and I I think I got so um, I would get like paralyzed with this pressure of like oh my god what like I don't know it's just like nothing ever felt good enough because I felt this pressure to make everything perfect and I know for example with my Instagram and I really like threw away that and just said I'm just gonna post whatever I like in that day and I do think my pictures do have a consistency to them I think that that kind of happened naturally but I didn't put pressure on myself to feel like oh is this photo gonna look nice next to this photo it was just like I'm going to post what I want to post on that day and that's just how I'm going to do it. And uh, the advice that I got from this podcast, I don't remember which one it was, it, it was specifically about editing YouTube videos because I used to spend so long editing YouTube videos um, and I still kind of do sometimes but at the end of the day, you know, uh, this person was like, don't focus so much on editing because at the end of the day, like you're not trying to sell yourself as a professional editor. Like if you are, like if that's your job, if you're trying to get work being a professional editor, your videos obviously have to be edited perfectly because that's what you're doing to sell yourself. But like I'm not trying to get work as an editor. So, you know, my videos don't have to be edited perfectly. Uh, I'm not trying to get work as a, you know, um, an Instagram photographer. I'm not trying to get work as a, a photo editor. I'm not trying to get work as a video editor uh, or a videographer or something. So like my videos don't have to be perfect because I'm trying to connect with my audience. And obviously I want to create things that are visually uh, aesthetic. At the end of the day, it's more important that I get the content out there because I'm trying to, I'm trying to create a brand, but I'm not trying to sell myself as being like the best editor or the best photographer or anything. And, and that piece of advice I'd already started doing on Instagram but I, I feel like that took a huge weight off my shoulders from feeling like everything had to be so perfect it just it allowed me to just create and I do think that my content actually got better once I stopped putting that pressure on myself and I just sort of let myself create things because sometimes it's just the best of your ability and I know um, like one of my favorite movies is Walk the Line about Johnny Cash and and you know it's like there's a line in there where like June Cash is like or June June Carter at that point is like talking about you know you found your sound because you, you you can't sing no better uh, you know you were black because you got nothing else to wear like it like start taking credit for things like sometimes it's the things that where you're like, oh, well, this is the best I can do. Well, that might be what's helping you find your own style, your own personal, your look, your, you know, your, again, your style, your brand. Um, you know, it, it's, 
it's what makes you you it's not necessarily a shortcoming it just it's what makes you unique so if you stop thinking about it as like well but I can't do it this way or like because I don't have professional editing or I don't have a professional photographer I I do 99% of my photos on Instagram and people are all like oh your photographer is so lucky and I'm like <laughs> it's me and yes I am uh, I've already probably been talking for a million years at this point, but I did actually have someone ask me about uh, how long did it take for brands to reach out to me. And um, it's interesting because when I was primarily just a beauty channel um, and I was mostly focused on beauty, because it was so competitive, it took forever. And and even even after doing it for years, like, I couldn't even get a lot of brands to even notice me. I do get some PR, I have gotten some PR over the years, but um, not not much and it took forever. Um, when I started focusing more on body positivity and my lingerie posts on Instagram and stuff, it happened very quickly. That doesn't mean I got paid quickly. <laughs> um, and if you want a video on how to make money on social media, uh, this is probably not the video for you and if you find a video with really great advice about how to make money on social media please let me know leave a comment and direct me to that video because um, yeah times are tough when it comes to stuff like that um, but as far as brands sending me stuff in the lingerie world it happened very quickly um, the key is just tag brands that you love find hashtags, uh, follow brands that you love, connect with brands that you love. And, you know, I feel like if you're, if you're what they're looking for to promote their brand, uh, they're going to reach out and send you stuff. Um, I haven't reached out to any lingerie. I mean, I have since I made the connection, but they always made the initial connection. I feel like if they don't, I mean, not to say that you can't reach out, but like either if they don't reach out or if you reach out and you're not what they're looking for, they'll tell you because they're just looking for people who fit their brand and that may or may not be you you know I mean I I know of a brand specifically um, who'd reached out to me and I there was another girl who is a similar shape to me but has a totally different look and she said she had reached out to them and you know that the, she wasn't really what they were looking for and um, I think it just is like I just happened to represent the look that they wanted and 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 she didn't but there are other brands that she works with that don't work with me because I just I mean even though we're like promoting the same sort of uh, size and style lingerie it just each brand has their own look and their own you know what who they think is connecting with their audience in whatever way so try not to take it personal um you know if if you're not what a brand is looking for because i think that's just it's just out of your control i mean it's the same thing with like you know going on auditions or you know or anything like that it's just it just it's luck of the draw it's if you're what they're looking for great if you're not what they're looking for uh, try not to let that get discouraged and don't define your don't define yourself and who you are by what brands are interested in you um, or you know numbers or anything like that like try not to get caught up in that because you know I don't even care like there are people who look at me and think that I have so many followers but you know there's plenty of people that I look at and think oh my god they have so many followers like there's always people who have more there's always people who have less that's just life try not to let it define you um, there's also a lot of people out there who have less followers than me who are making a lot more money who work with a lot more brands who are a lot more connected simply because of you know their style or their particular audience audience or their engagement or anything like that so so yeah I think I got through the questions I want to run through a few super important things that are just like technical things for social media um, so if you're still with me all right I'm gonna say with YouTube uh, keywords research keywords I use TubeBuddy I use the uh, free version which they kind of keep wanting me to upgrade and I haven't done it yet but um, I use that for keyword research um, however you decide to do like SEO keyword research um, which could be a whole video in itself or whatever but like pay attention to what people are searching look for keywords how people are searching it um, and when you use those keywords it can give you video ideas it can also help you uh, in your titles and your descriptions like it's those the keywords that you really want to pay attention to so with YouTube I would say that's the key most of my videos that got really popular were because of um, keywords honestly some of them it was totally accidental I didn't know what I was doing and I just happened to hit a keyword that you know got really popular and the video got really popular and I lucked out in that situation but I do have some that like I specifically 
researched and targeted and and some that I actually got really specific with and spent a lot of time researching and they didn't go anywhere um, so it is somewhat luck but I think if you re if you actually do keyword research and uh, kind of I don't know target your titles and stuff to uh, you know you obviously want them to sound natural but you want them to uh, you know be things that people are searching for also for YouTube I would say for creative people um, it's got to be something that someone's looking for especially when you're starting out I know it can be really tempting to like post a video like say of your stand-up routine and be like stand-up comedy at such and such a club or whatever no one's gonna find that like except maybe people who already know you you know I know a lot of people I've heard a lot of like I've heard Oh my god, I sat there and listened to a comic. I don't even remember his name, so I won't tell you his name because I don't remember it. Um, who was not famous, but he actually sat there, a whole bunch of brand new comics, and like lectured everybody on like, well, this is how you get famous in comedy, which is like, well, if you know how to get famous in comedy, why aren't you famous? But, uh, you know, he broke down this whole thing about how, you know, you just sell out a stadium uh, of your friends and family, which... Uh, doesn't work if you don't have a stadium full of people that are your friends and family and obviously it doesn't work right now because nobody's going out but anyway um you could probably fill a stadium if everyone has to be like five or six seats apart so that would be pretty easy to get to sell out a stadium if you have to have that many empty seats i don't know but like he was like just do that get it get one great tape put your video online the video will go viral and then everyone will want to work with you and i was like do you have any idea how difficult it is to get a video to go viral like it doesn't happen overnight it takes it takes work, it takes time. I, I I don't know the exact statistics, but I'm pretty certain that like, if, if anybody has just posted one video online and had it go viral, there's a very small number of people that that's happened to. Like most people have to, you know, post consistently for a while and then they may get lucky with one video. Um, and then other videos might get popular because of that one video. But Social media, I mean, there was a time when people could be an overnight success with it, but most people are not overnight successes with social media. It takes time, it takes work. Um, but with YouTube, I would recommend, I mean, you can use your humor, you can be entertaining, that's totally fine. Um, but you wanna target what you're doing towards what it is that people like. Look at the topics in your stand-up comedy routine, say if you're a comic or something, um, and like look at, you know, what do you talk about? Could you possibly make a video based on something you talk about, you know, um, you know, maybe you work at a certain job and, uh, you know, you want to make a funny video about with advice or something like people go to YouTube because they want to learn something because they want to see something. And I don't think it's enough to just be entertaining. I think once you make videos that help people or that teach people or, you know, educate people or things like that, I think once you establish yourself in that area, um, and you kind of build a following with that, then I think you can do a video here or there that's like just pure entertainment. But I think people fall into the trap a lot of like, I'm just gonna make a video that's just funny and just entertaining. And it's like, people aren't gonna necessarily find that. You need to, you need to do something to help them, um, to connect with them. Another great way, which I've actually has worked for me, I think my second most popular video I actually came up with because of, uh, because of doing this, is um, look at the things that you're looking for. If you're looking for a review on something or you're looking for advice on a certain topic or in a certain area and you're not finding that information easily, um, that's a flag right there that, you know, it's something that you're, you're curious about and nobody else has actually taken the time. So if you take the time to do the research, that happened to me actually with my cool sculpting video, is uh, I really wanted to do cool sculpting. And I found a lot of people like promoting it and they would show it getting done, but like nobody to follow up. Nobody did, there was no nothing on YouTube. Uh, a few blog posts here or there, but there was like nothing on YouTube about people actually talking about their full experience and then like what happened after the three months. So when I actually did cool sculpting, I did a video talking about it. I've done several videos talking about it and, and my first video talking about it was, is I think my second most popular video. Um, because I wanted to know about it and I think if, you know, if your audience potentially, because uh, I think in most cases your audience is probably similar to you, uh, so if it's something that you're interested in and something that you want to learn how to do and you can't find anybody else doing it 
or there's very few people talking about it, then do your research, figure out how to do it, or, or you try it out yourself and, uh, you know, be safe. I mean, don't be, I don't want anybody being like, yeah, I wonder what it's like to jump off a cliff and then it's like, it won't go well. Like be safe within reason. Um, but you know, it, it helps like if something, something that you want to learn and not a lot of other people are talking about it. That's actually one thing when it comes to keywords and when it comes to hashtags on Instagram, it's super important. Hashtags on Instagram are just a love them or hate them thing, but I did grow a lot using hashtags on Instagram. So now they don't help me at all, but they used to. And the key is, and this is with keywords too, when you're doing whatever, however it is that you're doing keyword research, which again is a whole video in itself. And also with hashtags, I would say when it comes to social media and stuff, you want to aim for the ones that are like popular enough so that people are actually searching for them. You don't want to, you don't want to find ones that like nobody's searching uh, or nobody's posting in or nobody's active in. You don't want to pick the ones that are the most popular because that's where the most competition is. You want to pick the ones that are like, I would say for like, especially with like Instagram hashtags, for example, you want to pick the ones that have, you know, I'd say like any a hundred thousand, hundred thousand, 500,000, whatever, you know, posts in it because you know that it's active, but it's not so active. Cause if you have like a hashtag that has like, you know, 5 million posts in it, like your post's going to get lost. Like it's, just, it is. And if somebody, if it only has like 50 posts, then nobody else is probably using it. So you want to focus your hashtags in that like middle of the road range. Uh, same thing with keywords. When it comes to keywords, however it is that you choose to do your keyword research, you want to pick the ones that have the highest search ratio, like the highest search, like they're searched the most with the lowest competition. Uh, so sometimes that ends up sort of in the middle. You wanna find that middle ground of like what people are searching for, but not a lot of people have already posted about. That, that'll just help you create your content, similar with keywords and with hashtags. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, there's so many things to talk about uh, when it comes to social media. And I mean, I could, I could do like a whole video just on individual topics alone, but there are a lot of people out there that are doing like specific social media videos. I mean, I think the, I guess to sum up, because I'm probably gonna run out of my battery time again, and this is gonna take me so long to edit because I'm gonna have to edit out all my ums. Oh, this gonna take forever. Um, <laughs> if you wanna know a little bit more about my like background and my journey and my story, whatever, I actually did two podcast interviews with some very good friends of mine. Um, two different ones. I'm actually going to link those in the description box because I do talk a little bit more about my transition from my comedy life into blogging. And I, I, I talk, I talk a little bit more in detail about me. So if you want to learn a little bit more about me, um, and my journey and my story, I'm going to link both of those podcasts in the description box. They're actually each with, um, comics who are very good friends of mine, who I was lucky enough to sit down with before all of this social distancing happened. Um, and uh, so yeah, so they're kind of long, but you know, if you guys are looking for something to listen to, uh, they're they're great guys and they're great podcasts. So I will link those. But yeah, I think really the key is um, it, it just be yourself and be who you are. And I think the ants, a lot of the answers to God, this is gonna sound so like out there, but like the answers are really all inside you. It's just a matter of finding them and finding what it is that, that you want to say, what your message is. I also, I, nobody asked about money and I don't know if that's just because everyone was afraid to. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm not the person to tell you how to make big bucks online, but if you're in this just to make money and I know that times are tough right now and I know that a lot of people are scared, a lot of people are getting on here to do this because they've lost other income and they want to grow an income. And yes, there are ways to make money on social media. There are ways to do that. And if you guys want a video with any tips that I have, um, it's not a lot, but, um, you know, I, I have AdSense and I have, um, affiliate links. I have done sponsored posts before. I haven't done a lot of them though. I'm leery about sponsored posts. Uh, that's not to say if a brand that I loved wanted to sponsor a video, please reach out. I would love that if you're watching please. But, um, I, I get leery when it's brands that I don't know. And I'm just really picky because, and, and okay, this is another thing that I want to say, because I, for me, I take being an influencer very, very seriously. Um, I, I don't have the biggest following in the world, but like 
I take the things that I say to you and the things that I recommend to you and the things that I talk about it and my advice and my reviews and my everything, I take it very, very seriously. Even when I'm being like lighthearted and funny and whatever is like, obviously, you know, when I give opinions or advice, it's just my opinion and my advice from my experience and maybe not everything is gonna work for you, but I always want it to be honest and genuine and and I think, I think being honest and genuine is so much more important and there are people who can sell out and you can probably figure out how to make money, um, but you're gonna, you're gonna lose your following. And once you lose your following, you're not gonna make as much money. So for me, I would rather have a bigger following but be making less money. I would rather have a big following and make a lot of money, but you know, I would rather have an audience who trusts me and trusts my opinion. So when I do recommend something, they know that I'm recommending it because it's actually a good product um, or a good thing or a good piece of advice or whatever it is that I'm recommending because once you break that trust it's hard to gain it back um, we've seen that play out with a lot of big name influencers like even if you're a, a multi-millionaire and you become the biggest and you get millions of followers and you're the biggest you know success on social media it can all be taken away if you just are not genuine and honest with people and I think that that's something that I take it very seriously and I would encourage you all to take it very seriously and honestly it's the same it's the same thing with performing I mean if you're somebody who's here because you're a performer who's now trying to grow their online presence you know you you know I think you all know like you didn't become a comedian you didn't become a drag performer a burlesque performer a singer an entertainer strictly for the money because if you just want money there's other easier ways that you can just get money you know i mean there's other things that you can do you chose to do that because that was your passion and if it's not your passion it, it it's pointless why would you do it why would you do it if you're not if it's not your passion because there's so many other things that would be easier to do uh that you would make more money doing um and I think like social media and having a social media presence and an online brand is the same kind of thing. If you're just doing it just for the money and you don't have the passion, you don't have the heart behind it, there's other things you can do. Um, obviously right now there's limited things that people can do. So I know a lot of people are kind of panicking, but in the long run, it's not just about the money because the money is not going to happen immediately. Uh, it takes time to grow. And one of the reasons why people make money online is because they, and why we call them influencers is because they have an audience that they influence. Um, at, you know, whatever size, at whatever level, they have an audience that they influence. And if, if they don't take their audience's trust in them seriously and they play around with that, you can lose that audience really quickly. Um, people have to come to you, they have to trust you, and you have to build that first before you can sell them anything or before you can promote anything. You have to build that trust. Yeah, I hope I answer people's questions. If you have any other like specific questions or anything that you want answered, um, please uh, leave a comment. Uh, I'll try to answer as many as I can. If you are watching this video and you are an influencer, you are a social media person who decided to watch this to support me, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Because honestly, uh, that's another thing, connecting with other people uh, that are similar or even people who aren't, uh, who have, I mean, like I'm very approachable. I mean, if you message me and ask me stuff, I've had comics that have done this before. If you reach out and ask me questions, I will try to give you the best answer that I possibly can give you um, in, in the best span of time that I can because, you you know, I, I think, you know, building each other up and having people, um, you know, you know, connecting with other people and like, you know, I, you know, want to, I don't know, I want to help where I can. And, you know, I would hope that people would do that for me if I needed a question answered about something. Um, but building a community, uh, you know, liking and giving genuine comments on, you know, people's content uh, that you also enjoy that maybe have similar posts not getting too into like competing with other people who have similar stuff because you can both lift each other up and as opposed to trying to compete because you know i mean the internet's a big space there's room for a lot of people so it doesn't have to be about being competitive if you see someone else po i mean obviously if someone's copying you exactly then that's another issue but if you see someone posting stuff that you know, is is similar in someone who has a similar message and a similar brand and things like that. Like you can both 
lift each other up and stuff and that's one of the things like I've met some some wonderful amazing people on social media who I have never met in real life and and maybe I never will maybe I will um but you know it, it's it's that it's that having that that community and being a part of a community and stuff and connecting with other people um, online and you know helping each other out shouting each other out um, d don't beg for shout outs though or like buy followers or none of those shortcuts really work in the long run I would tell you my I accidentally bought followers one time it's it's a ridiculous story I accidentally bought them I, I didn't know that that's what I was doing I know that sounds so naive but this was many 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 years ago and I didn't really understand that's what I was doing and I I ended up uh, spending a lot of money and I ended up losing a lot of money and <laughs> I didn't really understand that that's what was going on at the time. Uh, it wasn't like a get a get famous quick scheme or whatever, it was kind of like give me some money I'll shout you out on my page which I'm told that there are legitimate places that do that, I've never figured that out so if people are like hey pay me money and I'll shout you out. I don't don't really believe in that but some people have had success doing that so I don't want to say that they're all scams but there are a lot of scams out there so be keep an eye out for scams boy the advice is just keep going i really hope that this video <laughs> i hope this video was helpful to you but seriously be yourself be in it for the right reasons get to know your why and 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 your who so why you're doing it and who you're doing it for and yeah i hope this video was helpful if this video was helpful and you enjoyed watching it please give it a big thumbs up if you have any other questions want me to do a follow-up video on anything specific um you know let me know or if you just have like a quick simple question you can always contact me um if you follow me on social media or i know you or anything you can always uh, send me a private message um if i don't know you i may not accept your private message so um try to let me know who you are and why you're why you're coming if you're just like hey or hi or hard eyes or something i'll probably block you but uh but yeah if you have any specific questions or want to follow a video or anything like that let me know leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to be an everyday starlet be sure you subscribe to my channel uh, be sure you follow me on instagram i will try to leave as much information as I possibly can about things that I talked about in the description box below. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy uh, and hopefully we can all get through this crazy time together. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope you join me next time.